When it comes to restoring trust after a breach, there's a lot of layers involved. So first of all, you've got which systems can I trust and which parts of my infrastructure have been compromised. And then there's all the way up to the board level or the operating committee of the company. Are you ever going to trust me again? I let something bad happen on my watch. You know, so those things kind of intertwine. And what we generally recommend is that you start with trying to establish trust in the systems and the infrastructure that support your business. So what that involves is going in and surgically evaluating the systems that you have versus a known good standard, whether it's you know what you originally deployed, whether it's some kind of an objective standard from a vendor or from a standards body. You know, there are a lot of different ways to slice it, but what we're really trying to do is very quickly sort through our infrastructure and figure out which systems are trustworthy and which ones are not and as quickly as possible replace the ones that have been compromised with something that we can trust. There's impact to the brand, no question. But even more basic than that is the impacts, direct impacts in terms of costs that um, the employees of that organization might experience or uh, the customers of that organization. So impact to the brand is oftentimes a secondary or even tertiary concern at the CIO level. In many uh, data security breaches, we, we see you know the immediate fallout uh, tends to involve a lot of media attention, a lot of uh, negative publicity, obviously surrounding uh, organizations, perhaps failure to implement uh, reasonable security measures to protect data, uh, and of course users, affected users, receiving notices, um, sometimes they required legal notices from the company, sometimes they hear about it through the press, um, but, but one way or another users questioning uh, why, you know, customers questioning how did this happen, uh, and, and organizations um, I think more so than they used to have uh, started to take some steps that are important to build trust, uh, like for example providing things like credit monitoring services to users who have been affected, but um, you know more and more I think uh, savvy customers are expecting a little more, are expecting, um, you know, well, what, what are you doing to protect my information in the first place? When you're dealing with a relationship between a company and its customers, trust and confidence are very important. And I think security plays a big role in that. If you can explain to people in terms that they understand how you're going to protect their best interest, you know, how you're going to protect either their livelihood or their confidential information, or even just the security of knowing that the service will be available to them over time because you're doing a good job of managing security. You know, all of that can contribute to better business success where people see you as a reliable provider. They see you as someone that they want to place their trust in and engage in a relationship over the long term. You know, so security doesn't have to be some tax that you pay. Security can actually be a core part of the value prop that you bring to your business. I think the more an organization can share to try to explain, here's how it went down. I mean, if we, if, using the example of the target breach, for example, uh, you know, that is one where it was not exactly clear what happened in the notices that went out. Um, and, and we learned over time that it turned out to be a vendor and it turned out to be a, you know, an air conditioning vendor, right, ultimately, who was somehow the link into the, uh, the compromised uh, uh, systems and so uh, you know you have to wonder so how much of that did Target know before how much could they have disclosed early on were they still in the process of determining what happened there's a bit of a conflict between how quickly you have to notify right under some of the laws and certainly the public expectation of how quickly versus how much information you can provide because it takes a little while to really know in, in a thorough investigation sometimes what happens. So, so the more you can say initially without compromising an investigation, I think the better. Oh, IT security, of course you have governance folks, you'll have a CIO role who's typically involved in that, but most of executive management will have some role or function in navigating um, uh, an organization's way through investigating and responding to the impacts of a data breach. Stay calm, <laughs> uh, you know, don't panic. Um, if everybody is running around, like you know, chickens without heads. It becomes. It can be much more difficult to deal rationally with consumer expectations, with the media, with uh, regulators who are going to be asking questions. So stay calm. Uh, number two, um, you know, get those notices out. Right, the ones that are required by law. What do you have to do? Get the notices out to consumers. If you have to notify regulators, do that. If you have to notify the media, do that. Get that done. Right. Get that out of the way. Um, and then you know. 
in some ways, most importantly, make sure everybody's in the conversation from the beginning, right? So make sure your your PR people are in the room with the lawyers, with the privacy people, with the information security uh, team and the IT folks. Um, everybody's there, you know, coming up with the appropriate um, discussion points about what are we going to say. How are we going to explain to people, you know, what happened here? How are we going to rebuild that trust? All of those players, all the stakeholders within an organization need to be in the room. And that's one of the key things I think doesn't always happen.